So here it is, Sting's new album, The Bridge. Uh, it's been out about a week now, and uh, I've had a chance to listen to it a number of times and uh, digest it and come up with a few thoughts. So I'm going to attempt a little uh, review of my own of this album. And uh, quick uh, backstory as to, as to how the album came about. Um, Sting was out on the My Songs tour in 2019 behind the album of the same name. Uh, he was planning shows in 2020 and of course the pandemic hit, we had the lockdowns and therefore all the shows got uh, cancelled or, or postponed. And Sting therefore found himself uh, at home at uh, Lake House in Wiltshire uh, with nothing to do really other than to think about coming up with, with new songs and the result ultimately is The Bridge and he's clearly come up trumps uh, with this album, this is something a bit special. So as we suggested in the preview video the album is certainly uh, eclectic, uh, it has quite a mixture of different styles on there You've got rock songs, you've got ballads, you've got folk songs, you've got uh, electronic music. It, it, it's a whole different, it's a whole mixture of different kinds of songs. Uh, and yet the album knits together very nicely. Uh, and like all great albums do, it takes you on a sort of a journey from, from track one to, to track ten. Uh, it, you start in one place and you finish in another. The album was recorded in various locations, starting at Lake House, and then uh, he moved the operation out to uh, his estate in Tuscany, El Palagio, and then I think he moved out to, to America to do some sessions there, uh, and I think he did some sessions in Barbados as well. But a lot of the sessions were done remotely because of the enforced uh, lockdowns, so therefore uh, that there's not, I don't think there are any songs on here that, that feature a full band actually playing together. Uh, a, a lot of the musicians were, were sort of dotted around in, in various locations. Um, but I think towards the end of the recording process, uh, Sting was able to actually have some in-person sessions with the likes of Dominic Miller. Um, and Dominic, uh, of course, who's been working with Sting for over 30 years, his, uh, his guitarist, um, he actually plays a, a, a hugely significant role on this album uh, and he co-wrote uh, three or four of the songs with, with, with Sting on this record and to great effect and, and their collaboration to some extent sort of characterises this album. Uh, so Dominic's had a, a really positive impact on this album, as he does on all Sting albums, of course. He's become such an important part of Sting's sound. But I think on The Bridge, more so than, than any other previous album, Dominic has a, a really positive impact. So before we go into the songs on the album, we'll just take a look at some of the additions that have been released. This is my double vinyl edition. Now in the UK, this is available exclusively from independent record stores. And this edition includes the three bonus tracks which are also included on the various um, deluxe editions. Uh, and they're all on side D. Uh, so you, you've got Waters of Tyne, uh, Captain Bateman's Basement, and Sting's cover of uh, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, which was recorded uh, just before the bridge sessions for uh, an Alzheimer's charity. Uh, and uh, it's very nicely presented. I, I've really got used to the front cover of this album now. At, at first, I was a bit unsure about having a black and white photo with this with this uh, sort of coloured uh, obi strip down the side of it. But I've really got used to it now. I really quite like it. And uh, so it beautifully presented, and that's that's the inside of it. I think some of these photos of Sting were taken uh, possibly during the shoot for the uh, Russian Water video. And uh, I should say this vinyl edition sounds fantastic. Uh, it is, I would say it's one of the best sounding vinyl editions of an album that I own. It, it really does sound, it sounds terrific. Um, my only complaint about it is that the, um, 
the records are presented in these paper sleeves which uh, have an, an annoying habit of scratching the record every time you take the record in and out um, and uh, previous sting vinyl releases uh, were included with poly lined sleeves so uh, yeah and, and that's much much better for the record because it this it's a much uh, smoother surface uh, and there are no sort of uh, sharp edges for the record to, to, to get snagged on. Uh, so what I think I'll do is probably buy myself some spare uh, poly lined sleeves uh, to replace the ones that were included with this with this edition. But nevertheless, I'm uh, very impressed with the vinyl edition. The other edition that I have is the standard CD edition, uh, which just has the album itself on it, just the 10 track album. Uh, once again, it's very nicely presented. It's just a basic um, gatefold um, sleeve. And the only reason I have this edition uh, is basically because the uh, the box set edition, which is the, the, the other edition I ordered from the Sting store, uh, has been delayed until the, the 10th of December. Uh, and annoyingly, we only found out about this two days before the album was actually uh, released. Uh, they must have known about that for some time in advance, but uh, for whatever reason, they uh, elected not to tell us until uh, until two days before the release. But nevertheless, the most important thing is the album itself was released on the nineteenth of November as originally planned. So we we still got to hear it. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to that that uh, box set. Was, there's some really nice bits and pieces included with that one. Um, so there is also um, a deluxe edition which which is presented in a seven inch single style box um, and that also includes the bonus tracks it has a poster and, and various bits and pieces with it uh, there's the standard single vinyl edition as well there's uh, there's the colored vinyl edition which I think is available exclusively from Sting store so you've got plenty of plenty of editions to choose from of this record so let's Without any further ado, go into the songs. So the album opens with a song called Russian Water, which we briefly described in the previous video when we previewed the album. I just think this is a really good, strong, robust track with which to open the album. Um, one of the things I like most about it actually is uh, Dominic's um, guitar part during the chorus. It just gives the song so much atmosphere and sonically, it's the thing I probably enjoy most about that song. And uh, one of the, uh, the notable things about it for me was, was uh, with it being the first track, when I first pressed play on the album for the first time, uh, the sound really jumped out at me. It came, it came out much louder than I expected. I had to turn it down slightly. Uh, but it's just, it's just a good, clear sound, and it, it, it's, it's a good starter for the rest of the album. And... It, for me, it, it stands up with with all with a lot of the other really great album openers that Sting has recorded over the years, with the likes of The Hands of Winter from Mercury Falling, uh, Island of Souls from The Soul Cages, or The Lazarus Heart from uh, Nothing Like The Sun. Uh, it, it's right up there with those songs for me. Uh, and uh, that's a fantastic opener. So uh, the second track is uh, the first lead single, uh, If It's Love, uh, which... Again, as I described before, I, I just think it was a good choice for a lead single because it's just a it's just a light, breezy, uh, fun pop song. It's not the sort of song that's designed to blow you away. It's just uh, it's just a catchy pop song uh, with a memorable hook, um, and I think that was a a good lead single. And it it, it did get a, a good deal of radio play. It was it was played on on quite heavy rotation, so it was it was very successful in that regard. And so from that song, we move on to the first new song that we hadn't heard previously, which is called The Book of Numbers. Uh, and this is also the first track on the album that was co-written by uh, Sting with Dominic Miller. And uh, this is a, a really early highlight for me. Uh, obviously, Russian Water is, is a big highlight as well, but this one particularly... <clears throat> 
it's just a, again it's a really strong song it, it starts quite gently and then after a, after two or three verses it, it all of a sudden it just explodes uh, which is kind of appropriate really because the song is about Oppenheimer you know the inventor of the atom bomb um, and uh, you, you get these two big hits of the snare drum and it, and it, sting goes into full voice uh, lyrically it's strong musically it's strong it, it's just a, a really great track um, <clears throat> and a great sound and some of the electric guitar on it right from the start actually reminds me a little bit it, it puts me in mind a little bit of uh, which is alignment uh, by Glenn Campbell uh, to some extent. It re reminds me a little bit of, of the guitar solo from that song. Um, so that's perhaps one of my favourite tracks on the album. Track four, Loving You, uh, is the electronic track that we mentioned uh, in, in the preview. Uh, and this track, so it proves, is purely electronic. Uh, th there are no, as far as I'm aware, real instruments on here other than the vocals from Sting and his two backing vocalists, uh, Gene Noble and Melissa Music, who are in his current lineup, his current touring lineup. Um, and uh, this is um, a track where the, the, I think the backdrop was, was actually written by um, Mayor Jane Coles, who is one of the co-producers on this particular track, along with Sting and Martin Kiersenbaum. Uh, and uh, Sting wrote uh, a vocal melody over the top of it. Um, and uh, as, as I've mentioned in, in, a, in one of my Dire Straits videos, this, uh, jealousy is a subject matter, uh, you know, it's very effective for songs, it's a nasty emotion <laughs> in, uh, in reality, but from a creative point of view, it, it makes for really good songs. And, uh, and so that's really what Loving You deals with, it's a song about, about jealousy. Um, and it's, it's a really funky little song that, I, I quite enjoyed that. The next track is Harmony Road, and this is another one of the songs that was co-written by Sting with Dominic Miller. And in this particular instance, uh, it's based around a guitar line that Dominic wrote for a track on one of his own solo albums called Absinthe, which was released just a couple of years ago. And uh, one thing Sting does love to do is write songs in compound time, and this particular song is in 5-4. Um, of course, it's not the first song Sting's written in 5-4. Uh, a, a previous and more well-known example is uh, a song called Seven Days, which was on Ten Summoners' Tales. Harmony Road is quite different to Seven Days uh, in that uh, it, it's a bit more angular. Uh, seven, seven Days, although it's in 5-4, sounds very natural, whereas Harmony Road sounds a, a bit more kind of unusual. Um, but once again, I love Dominic's guitar playing on this song. I love Sting's vocal, particularly when he gets to the chorus, um, the way he, he sings slightly higher up the register and draws the notes out slightly more. He often does that when he wants to express a certain, a certain lyric or a certain feeling. Uh, this is a song that's about coming from a, a difficult community and finding your, your way out and finding success. Uh, and uh, the irony is the fact that the, this this place, it, although it's a difficult community, it's called Harmony Road. It's, it's uh, interesting how often you know difficult communities actually have have names like Harmony Road, which are the, which are com the complete opposite to what the place is actually like. Um, but one very significant element of this song is when Branford Marsalis comes in on saxophone, and of course Branford Marsalis was a member of Sting's first solo band back in 1985-86 uh, um, and it's a solo break that is kind of reminiscent of uh, Children's Crusade from, from the first solo album. Uh, it, it really sort of harks back to that early period of Sting's solo career and it's fantastic. So that's Harmony Road and then we move on to For, to, uh, for Her Love. For Her Love, um, in the press release, uh, was described as a song that evoked Sting's sort of Ten Summoners Tales period, that sort of early 90s, early to mid 90s period, which, which is my personal favorite period of Sting's work. I'm not quite sure why they said that, because it didn't remind me of that period 
at all, particularly. Um, which is not not to the song's detriment at all, but it just doesn't sound like that period of Sting's work. I mean, in order to evoke that sort of sound, I, I, I think you have to have Sting on bass and vocals, Dominic Miller on guitars, David Sanchez on keyboards, and Vinnie Colaiuta on drums. There was just something about the combination of those four talents that made that period of Sting's work what it, what it was. Um, but as I say, it, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with this song at all. I, I just don't know why they were comparing it to that period of Sting's work. Uh, it's a beautiful song. It, it's a song ab about the, the lengths to which somebody would go to, to a, a, attain the love of a woman. Um, and and it, it's got some lovely vocal harmonies in there. Um, it features Joe Lowry, who hasn't sung with Sting in a number of years. Uh, she first started working with Sting about 10 or 11 years ago. It's great to hear her back. She does some lovely work on this song and um, a, a later song on this album as well. Um, it's got a guitar line in there, uh, which is reminiscent of Shape of My Heart. It's, it's a similar sort of pattern. It's almost like a sort of a rearrangement of uh, the guitar part from Shape of My Heart. So that, that's, a, that's a beautiful song. Now the first six tracks on this album are, are all great songs and in their own right they make an excellent album. However, it's the closing stages of this album that really reached out and grabbed me. Uh, there are some absolutely outstanding songs uh, in, in, the, in the latter stages of this album. And the first of these, track seven, is uh, The Hills on the Border which is very much a folk song, and folk music is something that runs through the hearts of, of all of these last uh, four songs. This one, it, it almost, as, as it gets into its chorus, it almost sounds kind of Cajun. It's a really memorable, catchy chorus. Um, there's, there's not a great deal I can say about it, other than the fact that it's just a really good, strong song that really sticks in your head. Um, and that, that gives way to uh, an even better song called Captain Bateman, which I believe was the first song Sting actually wrote for this, for this album. And uh, it, it's, it's a story of, of it's an ancient story of, of how a captain of, of a vessel was, was imprisoned. And um, in order to be let out, he, he had to... Uh, promised to, to marry this, this woman who, who set him free. Uh, and Sting sort of reorganised the story a little bit and, and made him the captain of a, of a, of a Royal Navy vessel. Um, and uh, lyrically, it's, it's again really strong and again a fantastic vocal from Sting into the chorus. And this one features Manny Cache on drums, who again has is, is worked with Sting for many, many years. He first worked with Sting on the Nothing Like the Sun album in 87 uh, and his work with Sting on and off ever since. Now I've been critical of Manicache in the past uh, for, for various reasons which are, are too detailed to go into here uh, but on this particular track he sounds as good as he has ever done with Sting. His snare sound in particular sounds really bright and it really suits this song. It, it is a really fantastic track the, the chorus in particular. That's another thing that I think that, that, that kind of characterises this album is really good, strong choruses. You, you've got one on Russian Water, uh, The Book of Numbers, um, and Captain Bateman. And just such a great track. It, it, it's, it's almost exhilarating as you, as you get into the chorus of that song. So then we have track nine, which is The Bells of St Thomas. And this is a really beautiful song. The, the, the intro is actually reminiscent of uh, When the Angels Fall from the Soul Cages because it uh, alternates between the, the, the major and the relative minor. Um, this is uh, the last song on the album that was co-written by, by Sting and Dominic. And it's got, it's got some interesting uh, subject matter um, to this song. It's, it's written from the point of view of a of a guy who, who wakes up in the bed of some rich woman and she's asking him to stay and, and he's kind of grappling with his conscience. It's a really beautiful, heartfelt song, this, and it's, it's in 3-4, and Sting has said that he, that, that he does love to write songs in 3-4, in and uh, I love to hear songs in, in, in waltz time, 
Um, Martin Offerton does it quite a lot as well. It, it, there's just something about about that form that, that really works well. Um, this is not a song that explodes into a big chorus like Captain Bateman or you know, the Book of Numbers or anything like that, but it, it's just a really beautiful, heartfelt, thoughtful song. And uh, then we have the, the final track, which is the title track, The Bridge. And this one is just uh, Sting and Dominic Miller on, on acoustic guitars playing in unison. They play some really beautiful stuff on this song. And once again, it's, it's really thoughtful, heartfelt. Um, it's really a song about, about how we're all living through difficult times and, and just trying to find a way forward. Um, and uh, it's, it's the perfect ending. It, it ends on the, just a, with, with that harmonic at the end. Um, and it's just a, a lovely way to sum up the album um, because it is, this is a really well thought out album. It's, 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 really, it's really polished and it's, it's got a great sound to it, it and it's, it's just well constructed. And the bridge is a, a, a quite intimate sort of way uh, and the perfect way uh, to finish this terrific record. I wasn't quite sure what to expect when I first pressed play on the bridge. I mean, Sting's been exploring wildly different genres over the past uh, 15, 20 years or so, uh, from symphonic uh, arrangements of his songs to, to lute music, to folk music. Um, and after he started writing again, this, this is the fourth album we've had since he started writing original songs again. And each of those albums has explored a different sort of musical avenue. Um, uh, the, I mean, the previous solo album, 57th and 9th, was very much a, a, a raw sort of guitar orientated pop rock album, which I really enjoyed. I'm, I'm quite fond of that album. I, I, I kind of like the, the, the rawness of it. Um, I like the simplicity of it. Um, the Last Ship, I mean, the, the, the stuff that he wrote for The Last Ship, that whole body of work was, was well, it's obviously a su subject matter that's, that's quite close to Sting's heart because it's about the place he comes from. It's about Newcastle. Um, and it was terrific. And of course we had 44876 with Shaggy, which explored the, the sort of the reggae side of, of Sting's influences to some extent. This album though is, is something else. It, it is, for me, it is, and I honestly mean this, it, 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 this is the best work I've heard from Sting in 25 years. It's, it's, it is an instant classic. For me, the, the last real, real sort of classic Sting album was Mercury Falling, which was released way back in 1996. And uh, The Bridge is most certainly the, the, the finest work I've, I've heard from Sting since then. I'm gonna say it, it, it's a masterpiece. It is a terrific album. We have not heard this sort of depth from original Sting material in many, many years. And one significant point I should make about this album is that it, it doesn't sound like Sting is going after any particular sort of market. He's not trying to follow a particular sonic trend. You know, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't sort of taken the auto-tune route uh, as, as so many artists have done in, in recent years. That seems to be the way to produce music, music these days is to, is to sort of computerize it and make it sound um, as, as perfect as possible. Uh, but what Sting has produced here is organic, it's it's just it's just Sting being Sting, and that's what makes it so great. That's what makes it for me an instantly classic Sting album. It is it is well produced. It is thoughtfully written. It is a genuinely magnificent album, and my recommendation is go out and buy this album immediately.